you may have come across the mathematical concept of vectors in your higher studies in mathematics subject. Now we shall discuss briefly what they are and what they represent. A vector represents quantities that have both magnitude and direction in some Euclidean space. So we may define a vectors in the Euclidean geometry as Vectors are ordered collection of numbers that are points in some Euclidean space. Examples 2D vector example would be x and y axis points given as 2 and 3 respectively and 3D vector example would be x, y and z axis points given as 4, 7 and 3 respectively. The magnitude of a vector is the square root of the sum of squares of its magnitudes in each axis. For example, we have magnitude of v is equal to under root v1 square plus v2 square where v is a 2d vector as shown here and v1 is the x part and v2 is the y part so magnitude of v will be under root v1 square plus v2 square so example of 2d vector here is this 2 3 and 3d vector is 4 7 3 Now we move on to the concept of matrices. A matrix is a set of elements organized into rows and columns as shown in the example below. The matrix has three rows and three columns and the whole matrix is enclosed within brackets. Here matrices refers to the plural of matrix. You must have come across this concept as well in your higher education in both physics and mathematics. Now I shall demonstrate few special matrices or matrices that have some specific properties. First on the left column is the diagonal matrix here. Here diagonal means this diagonal and the other diagonal will be termed as anti-diagonal which is this one. So if we have all the diagonal elements to be non-zero and all the other elements to be zero it is termed as a diagonal matrix next we see the tridiagonal matrix on the second in the left column a tridiagonal element has all elements as zero except for elements in the diagonal the left diagonal below that and the right diagonal above that so we have this as the main diagonal which has a d g and j elements so the immediate diagonal below that is this one which has c f and i and the immediate diagonal above that is this one has b e and h so all the elements in these three diagonals should be non-zero and all the others should be zero then it will be a tridiagonal matrix then we have the upper triangular matrix that is shown in the figure on the first in the right column here upper triangular in this all the elements in the diagonal and above that are non-zero and all other elements are zero similarly in the lower triangular matrix we have the diagonal elements to be non-zero and the elements below the diagonal to be non-zero and all other elements to be zero. So now I'll tell you about the identity matrix. The identity matrix is a square matrix and has all the elements as zero except for the diagonal matrix elements which are all essentially equal to one. So here we can see that all diagonal elements are one and all other elements are non i mean zero and uh, this matrix is a square matrix which means that the number of rows is equal to the number of columns an identity matrix has to be a square matrix next we shall see what is meant by transpose of a matrix transpose of a matrix is taken by flipping the rows and columns of a matrix so if we interchange the rows and columns of a matrix we shall obtain its transpose for example example if we have a demo matrix like this 
I'll show it with the help of an example. So for this is the matrix one, two, and other row is three and four. Then its transpose will be written as this transpose power T S in is equal to rows and columns interchange. It will be one. 3 and 2 4 so the first row is the first column here and the second row is the second column here properties involving transpose of matrices are transpose of a matrix taken two times results in the same matrix or a transpose transpose is equal to a this is quite evident Next is A into B transpose, which is equal to A transpose into B transpose. Here into sign is not shown, but AB simply means we are multiplying A by B. You can check for LHS or left hand side is equal to RHS or right hand side to be equal with the help of random examples. Finally, we have A plus B transpose is equal to A transpose plus B transpose. This is also quite evident. Transpose of the sum of two matrices is equal to the sum of individual transpose of the two matrices involved. Now we move on to the concept of rank of a matrix. What is rank of a matrix? The rank of a matrix is defined as either the maximum number of linearly independent column vectors in the matrix or the maximum number of linearly independent row vectors in the matrix where for an R by C matrix where R and C are the number of rows and columns in the matrix if R is less than C, then the maximum rank of the matrix is R. Also, if the rank of a matrix is equal to the number of rows, it is termed as singular, else it is known as non-singular matrix. Now we shall see what are identity matrix again. For a given rank R, a square matrix where number of rows is equal to number of columns, if it is a diagonal matrix and all non-zero elements are 1, then it is also known as identity matrix of rank R. So as discussed, discussed earlier, all the diagonal elements are 1 and all other elements are 0. So in this example below, I have shown few identity matrix of various ranks ranging from 1 to N. So here Rank 1 means singular, single row, single column matrix. Rank 2 means a square matrix of two rows and two columns. Similarly, I3 is equal to this and IN. What is inverse of a matrix? An inverse of a matrix, when multiplied by the matrix itself, gives us the corresponding identity matrix. In other words, for a square matrix A, the inverse of A written as A to the power minus 1 is such that A A inverse is equal to I, where I is the identity matrix for A. Now we shall see what is singular value decomposition. Any matrix A can be decomposed as A is equal to U D V transpose, where D is a diagonal matrix with D is equal to rank of A, non-zero elements. The first D rows of U are orthogonal basis for column major A. The first D rows of V are orthogonal basis for row major A. And applications of the singular value decompositions are in finding matrix pseudo inverse and in low rank matrix approximation. Gradients and derivatives. Differential calculus is a branch of mathematics concerned with computing gradients. You must have come across the concepts of differential calculus in the mathematics subject in higher education. Now we shall understand what is meant by partial derivative of y with respect to x. Consider a function y is equal to fx, which is known as the partial derivative of fx with respect to x. The example for same is shown on the right hand side. It is quite same as differentiation of y with respect to x, but instead of the dy by dx, we write rho y by rho x. Here rho means partial derivatives of y with respect to x. The term with respect to here is very important. Consider for example 
if we have y is equal to x into z where z is also a variable like x then taking differentiation of y implies taking differentiation with respect to both x and z but if we want to measure the change in y due to change in x alone and not the change in y considering any of the change in z we can consider z to be a constant and take derivative of y in a normal way and term it as rho y by rho x which is partial derivative of y with respect to x when z is taken to be a constant so we have here symbol rho here So as you can see it is same much like the differentiation definition but instead if we had would have had any other variable here it would be treated as constant. Gradient descent minimization. Suppose we have a function fx and we want to change the value of x to minimize fx. What we need to do depends on the derivative of fx. There are three cases to consider. If partial derivative of f with respect to x or rho f by rho x is positive, which means slope is greater than 0, then fx increases as x increases, so we should decrease x to find a minimum. If rho f by rho x is negative, which means slope is less than 0, then fx decreases as x increases, so we should increase x in order to find a minimum. If rho f by rho x is equal to 0 then fx is at a maximum or minimum so we should not change x. So these concepts help us to minimize fx. In summary we can decrease fx by changing x by the amount del x is equal to x new minus x old is equal to minus of eta into rho f upon rho x where eta is a small positive constant specifying how much we change x by and the derivative rho f by rho x tells us which direction to go in. If we repeatedly use this equation, fx will keep descending towards its minimum and hence this procedure is known as gradient descent minimization. We will use this algorithm in uh, detail in uh, many of the models that we will be discussing.